Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be building a React loading skeleton and we're going to have a user page and when you click on a user it'll show their latest post and when you go back it'll show these user cards. So it should be pretty straightforward, just some basic knowledge of React is required and let's get into it. All right, so I have the starter files open here and these are gonna be in the description below, so you could pull them down and follow along. So right now, we we don't have any of the loading skeletons in. We just have this little paragraph tag that says loading. And within our app, we have two routes, the home route and then the single post route. At the home, we are just gonna have an array of users, which will be an empty array to start with. And when the component renders, it's gonna run this function fetch some fake users and set those users in our local state. And once those are set, we're gonna map through each user and output a user card. We're also gonna pass that in through the props. And inside the card, we're just gonna display their name, their email, and just some info. There's also a click handler that basically just navigates the user to slash post slash the user ID, because that's what we defined here. And when the post component renders, we grab that user ID with the use params hook that comes from React Router. And we basically fetch the user's post based on their ID. We get back an array of posts and we just set our post to the first item of that array. And once that's loaded in, we just display the post title and the body. And we also have a link to go back. So right now our loading state is being tracked by this paragraph tag, but we want to use the loading skeleton. We're going to be using the react loading skeleton library. And if we look at the docs, we just have to import this and it gives us a skeleton component that we could then configure with different props. And if we scroll down to the example, we could just put it right next to our title or body or whatever we want to load. So initially this is going to be undefined. So, it'll output the skeleton. And what's nice about this is that since it's inside the H1, it's gonna automatically be sized to the correct dimensions because it inherits the styles. So we don't even have to worry about styling it. Let's import this into our app. And we'll use the skeleton down here. If we hit save, we should be able to see the skeleton and there it is. And right now it's this really ugly white color. So if we scroll down in the docs, we could see that it also gives us a skeleton theme component. This basically just gives the base color and the highlight color to any child skeleton components. So we could just wrap our entire app with a theme and all the child skeletons will get those colors. So let's do that. Okay, so I also want to give it some uh, custom colors and I'm just going to paste those in now. And when we hit save, we should see the, the new colors and there they are. The last thing we want to do is add more lines to the body because as we could see, this is more than one line and our skeleton currently displays one. For that, we could just add a count prop and this refers to the number of lines to display. So we'll just give it three and that should be all good. That's looking exactly how we want it and we could just get rid of this loading. Now we could just focus on the user page. So for the user cards, we're gonna do them a bit differently. Instead of passing in the skeletons into the user card component, we're gonna create a whole new skeleton card component and use the skeletons within that. And the reason for that is if we look at the cards here at the home, these cards only render when the users have loaded. So initially it's an empty array and these are an output. So if we were to put any skeletons within the user card, as we did in the post, we would never see that because these only display when there are users. And even if we pass the loading state in through props and track it through that, we don't know how many users are gonna display until the users have already loaded in. So we're gonna just create our whole new, a whole new separate component, and we're gonna display that when it's loading, and once the users have loaded in, we're just gonna display the user cards. So let's create that component. And we're gonna call it card skeleton. We 
Now, the first thing I want to do is give this card skeleton a class name. So we'll just call it card skeleton. And if you look at our cards, we have two columns. So one for the image and one for the info. So let's create those two columns. And the skeleton in the left column is going to be a circle. So we'll just add the circle prop. And we'll also give it a width and a height, which will be 40 pixels because that's the height of the image. If we hit save and import the component in our app, we should see it. There it is. And it doesn't look quite like the cards yet. So I'm going to paste in some styles and quickly go over them. Okay, so the card skeleton is going to become a flex container and it'll take up 100% of its width and height. That's going to be a fraction of the grid container. It's going to have some padding and border. And then the left column is going to have a bit of margin for the picture here. The right column is going to have a flex of one. And what this means is that it's going to take up one or 100% of the available width. So if I change this to 0.5, it'll take up half of the available width. You could see that there. So we want to change it back to one and that'll take up the full width. The next thing we want to do is add a few more skeleton lines because there's more info. For that, we can just add the count prop again. We'll do four. That looks good. And we just want to give it some margin. So we'll add that. OK, so our user card is looking good, except now there's only one card here. We could just come into the home component and just copy this component over and over. That would work, but that wouldn't be ideal. It's not really efficient. So instead, we're going to do something similar to the skeleton. We're going to pass a cards prop, and that'll be the amount of cards that we want to render. So we can just set this to eight. So now that we're passing that, we want to destructure those cards here. And instead of returning this one div, we want to first create an array. So we'll call the array method. And inside, we want to pass a number. This will be the length of the array. So we'll just pass in our cards. Now, this will be an array with the length of the amount of cards we passed. And we now want to call the fill method. And what this does is it goes through the array and fills each item with this value. So this output will be an array of the amount of cards and each value will be this zero. So if I just log this to the console, you guys could see that. We want to put eight for the cards. So we're going to have this array with eight items. And now we want to take that array and map through it. And for each item, we want to return this card skeleton. So we'll just grab this and put it in the map. If we hit save, we should now see eight cards. There they are. And you'll see React screaming at you in the console because we need a unique key. So we'll get the second parameter of the map, which is the index. And that'll be unique. So we'll give that as the key value. And now if we save, we should have no errors. Now that we have that working, I'll just get rid of this item. We don't care about the actual value. We'll save that and go back to the home. And we only want to render these card skeletons when it's in a loading state. We'll just do is loading. If that's true, we'll just output the skeleton. Otherwise, when it's not loading, it won't even look at the card skeleton. We'll get rid of this paragraph tag and now Skeletons should only load when it's in the loading state and when the users come in the cards display So we'll just go to a post and go back so you see the cards and then the users come up That's pretty much it for this tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always hit the like button if you enjoyed and Subscribe if you haven't already that would help me out greatly and 
let me know in the comments any feedback and what you guys want to see next. So I'll see you guys in the next one.